<laughs> I mean, Cat Williams. <laughs> I mean, what can I say, man? Um, homie just kept it real, man. You know, I feel myself everything that he's speaking about. Um, it's true, man. I mean, he just kept it real, man. After so much, you know, you know, the humans gonna let it out. Let me just say that, man. After so much, you know, he he, he got to keep it real, but that's what he did, man. That's why it's all over the internet. You know what I'm saying? The truth sometimes don't be as pretty as everybody wanted to be, man. You know what I'm saying? But I, like I say, I feel that he's telling the truth. I actually I know that he's telling the truth. And uh, Holmes got a solid soul, man. He got a great heart, man. And, you know, I have my own encounters with him, you know, through Mr. Bangladesh, shots out to Bangladesh. You know, I don't, uh, had the opportunity to uh, meet Cat, you know, in the studio with Chandra, you know, Mr. Bangladesh on several times when Chandra's working on his stuff, man. But I have my own story, my own personal encounter, you know, with him, man. Um, actually, I had just got out of Wright Street, just got out from um, the last time I, you know, burnt, burnt somebody up in College Park. And um, I had need a new setting. You know, I had moved down to uh, Noonan, Georgia, a little town on the outskirts of um, College Park, Atlanta. And um, I had started selling a little weed, man. You know, actually, I met somebody down there, big shot site to Mario Barber down at Noonan, one of my little homies, um, Bling. But uh, I had met up with him, man. He ended up leaving, you know, um, his weed clientele. Keep you know, back in the day, he, he ended up um, putting me on with the weed down there. I didn't know nobody down there. That was the first person I met. And uh, he left me like his whole clientele, you know, list or whatever. He moved to another part of Noonan, and um, I had the, I had the clients. You know what I'm saying? So this one girl used to come to my house. She used to get weed from me or whatnot. Um, she worked at a little restaurant right in Noonan, right down the street from my apartment. So she coming to my house to get weed, and one day she came, and you know, her eye was black, you no know, lip was busted. She even had like a little blood clot in her eye, and. I asked her what was wrong with it, you know, what happened to her, you know. Um, my wife, you know, asked her. And um, she said that she was in an abusive relationship and her boyfriend had done it to her, man. He be being on the whatnot. So, of course, you know, um, I don't condone, you know, I don't agree with men and women at all. So I had told her, man, my wife also told her, like, hey, you don't have to take that. You can come sleep on our couch before you go through that. We don't even know you, but our hearts are big like that. You can come sleep on our couch. You don't have to go through that. So she was like, okay, or whatnot. But of course she did know how that love is. She did. And um, she continued coming to my house buying weed from me or whatnot. And then like after like a three-week period of time, she showed up and she had all her clothes in her bag and everything. You know, she said, you know, I'm leaving him. You know, I was busted, lip, you know, big and stuff. <laughs> so she stayed, <clears throat> excuse me. So she stayed on with me, man, for a good little period of time, man. Of course, um, my house had ended up being up under surveillance for all the traffic and stuff in my apartment. So we ended up moving into another little house right on Pinston Street in Noonan. So all of us moved there. Of course, she came with us. And in this case, um, we gave her one of the kids' rooms so she could have her own room or whatnot. So everything was going lovely. Um, she had a friend coming to get her, taking her to work. At times, we would take her. But when we didn't, when we could take her, she had a male friend to come taking her to work back and forth. So everything was cool. So then... Her and that male friend ended up into an argument. And it was like the second argument, the first time I heard it, you know, whatever. But like, you no, know, um, three or four days later, they they arguing again outside my house. I said, man, you know, we, we was new. We we was new in the neighborhood. So I didn't want all that, you know, um chaos, you know, coming to the, this neighborhood because of we just moved in. So, you know, I came outside on my porch, I see the guy, I see her, I, I break up the argument. Hey man, we all what's going on, man? I'm new here. You know, just too much going on, man. You know what's, what's going on? Like that, the, the guy ended up introducing himself. But when he introduced himself, he introduced himself as the person who was beating on her, her boyfriend. Well, prior to that, you know, I had asked her once he was coming over, picking her up, who is he? And she said his name was Teddy. Let's just say his name was Teddy. So once I asked him in the middle of the argument, hey, man, what's your name? And he told me his name. He introduced me uh, himself and told me his name. Um, he told me his name, so I looked at her. I'm like, hold on, this the same guy that you was with? The reason on you even staying with us? And she was like, well, you know, um, Teddy is his middle name. He was like, yeah, Teddy, my middle name, but my real name, my, my, my first name is this. So I said, no, that's not fair, man. You really was trying to, like, pull one over on me. You moved with me to get away from this guy, but still, in fact, here he is right now at the house, and here it is, arguments and stuff. 
So, you know, she, you know, she apologized and all that. Make a long story short, everything became okay. Uh, even me, me and the guy had ended up getting a, her, her boyfriend had ended up getting a little relationship because he'll come by all of the smoke, you know, chill out or whatever. Even when times she be at work, he'll come by, you know, hey, treats. I, mean, I got a little blank on the smoke, you know, we'll sit and smoke it together. So me and him had built our own relationship on, on our own accord. So, um, Make a long story short, you know, the fights keep coming here and there, here and there. You know, I, I seen him, you know, get on her, you know. And, I, of course, I have seen her uh, be aggressive herself because she wasn't no punk either. You know, that's my partner right now to this day. I love her. And, no, she, you know, she wasn't going to take it just sitting down either if you put your hands on her. So, I have seen her go in too or whatnot, man. But, with all that being said, the fights just kept coming, kept coming, kept coming. And I end up telling her that, hey, man, you know, if this keep on going, you know, you, you'll have to find your another place to stay like that, right? That's what she's like, okay, you know, I'm going to keep it down, you know, however, however. So for the most part, um, she kept it away from the house because she'd still come home at time and have bruises and have scratches and things of that nature. But, you know, I only could do so much, you know what I'm saying? But then at this time, Cat Williams, um, was at his peak, you know, so I can't even say at his peak because he's still doing his thing, big shots out the cat. Um, but he was hot, you know, hot doing his thing. He ended up coming to Atlanta, had some couple shows in Atlanta, and he ended up coming down to Noonan, Georgia. I'm quite sure all my partners and homies down in Noonan, Georgia, remember doing this time when Cat William came down to Noonan because it was all over the news that Cat William had got locked up in Noonan. Of course, everybody knew that he got locked up and stuff for things that was going on. But he kept it real, though. Man, you know, home was all in the hood. It, it was just like, he was just, you know, here and there, had bodyguards and all that. Man, home be in the hood by himself, man. You know, that's when I first realized that, you know, Cat is Cat, you know, dude like me or whatnot. Even though I had been up to Bangladesh, but he was coming down. He had came down to Noonan, man, and, you know, um, got locked up, but he was still staying down there in a little hotel or condo or something he had or whatnot, man. But my friend was at work one day. He went, came in to eat. You know what I'm saying? Face off, scarred, you know, messed up at work and stuff. And he, she ended up waiting on him. And uh, right then and there, man, they hit it off, man. Like, as, you know, chemistry for as uh, friends, like brother and sister, man. You know, like I said, he got a big heart, man. You know, and then Cat, everybody know, had adopted a lot of kids and, you know, took in kids and took in people that was less fortunate than he was. So she ended up being one of those people, man. You know, they talked, they talked. He asked what's wrong with the face and things of that nature. She ended up, she ended up telling him what was going on and things of that, man. And right then and there, man, Cat said, "You're coming with me. You're coming back to California when I leave. You know, you're not finna go through this." And you know, I couldn't believe it, man, because she came home that day, man, from work. She was so happy. She was so happy. Um, she coming out. She packed up all her stuff, and we don't like. We don't think she finna move into her own place. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> Just, but um. She packing up her stuff, man, and she uh, she told me what was going on. Like, what's going on? She was like, you know, Cat Williams now. I'm like, of course, who don't know? And she was like, but I just met him, man. I told him the things I was going through, man. I was staying with a friend and this and that. And he ended up saying I could come live with him. And we finna catch a flight. And we finna go back to California. I'm like, oh, you are kidding me. She was like, yes, I'm gone, Trees. I love you. I love you for everything you've done. Told me right there, hold my kids. And, man, she left. Got on the plane. Went to California with Cat Williams, man. And, you know, he pulled her up out of the hood. You know what I'm saying? Up out of the, the relationship and the um, situation that she was in with the blink of her eye. No question. He didn't think about it. He just wanted to help. So she ended up going back to California with him. Um, I was, I was, me and my wife was having my third child. And it was some complication with Isabella. You know, y'all know a lot of people know Isabella from Facebook. Um, but... She was having a lot of complications. We had to go through the Ronald McDonald house and live there and things of that nature. So we had moved from Noonan and moved to a condo up in Union City. It's right after I did the VH1 behind the music, Little Wayne, helped produce that right there. I got that little bread from there. And we got us a better place to stay. And once we were staying in that condo in Union City, I get a phone call from a friend. And she called me from Cat Williams' house up in California. When the phone rang, she's like, hey, you know. So having like, what's going on, girl? She's like, oh, trees. Man, I'm up here living it. Man, I just love it up here. Man, I think I'm going to stay up here forever and things of that nature. I'm like, oh, man, that's good. What y'all been doing? She's just telling me that <clears throat> she had uh, just been telling me that she had been going to different uh, places, different events with them and things of that nature, man. And she was so, 
just full of life, full of joy, man. And I hear a whole bunch of noise in the background and stuff. I'm like, who is that in the background? And she ended up saying, that's Magic Don Juan. You know, everybody know Magic Don Juan. I'm like, what? That Magic Don Juan right there? She's like, he right next to me with his big old cup. So I'm like, let me speak to him. And she put Magic Don Juan on the phone. But he get right on the phone. Hey, pimps up, players. This is that, you know. OJ, he just did his thing, you know what I'm saying? You know how he be ripping and rhyming like Dota Mike, man. But um, I chopped it up with him for about two or three minutes. Big shot sight of Magic Don Juan. And uh, she, gave, you know, she got back on the phone, man. Like I said, man, she was so happy. She was uh, thinking about staying there and, and you know, finding her uh, her own place and things of that nature. She was, you know, she was really looking for a future up there. You know what I'm saying? He had took her away. Cat Williams did that, man. I, I, like I said, had to go off to home, man. Um, but what was crazy was she ended up telling me, she said, and Don Trees, he done hired me. I said, he done hired you? What you mean? She was like, um, guess what my job is for Cat Williams up here? I said, what? Rolling blunts. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, what? She was like, yeah, he just paid me to roll all his blunts. That's all I do every day. And they smoke all day, every day. And that's all I do is roll his blunts. I'm like, wow, man. But that was amazing, man. You know, like I said, he came down. He took her out of the streets. He took her away from that whole incident or however, man. Um, unfortunately, man, unfortunately, probably uh, two months after I had talked to her and we had that phone call right there, man, um, I get a phone call. And it's from my, you know, one of my relatives. And he said, hey, man, you heard what happened to your girl. I'm like, no, what, what? And uh, he said, man, she's locked up for murder. And I'm like, well, I'm thinking, no, she's you know, in California with the Crips and the Bloods. <laughs> Why not happen, you know? But he had told me she had uh, moved back down to Georgia. You know, I don't know what happened up there, uh, 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 you know, whatnot. But to make a long story short, man, with you know, within probably six months after I got that phone call, I'm going to knock at my door in I'm staying in Fairburn, Georgia at this time. And when I get to knock at the door, it's from her lawyers. You know, she had two lawyers. You know, I invited them in. We sat down and they started talking about, you know, she's locked up in Nuna County, County for murder. You know, and I started asking what happened because last I heard she was in California with Cat Williams. They said she had came back home and she ended up getting back with her old boyfriend that was beating her and things of that nature. Well, they was out in Nuna. At the bootleg house, drinking and doing, you know, doing a regular day. That was a regular day for them. And I guess, you know, intoxication, the spirits got involved. And when they got back home, him and her got into a big argument that led to a fight. From from what she told me and from what the lawyers told me, man, you know, he, he beat her. You know what I'm saying? Simple as that, man. You know, he beat her. They fight. It's physical. Um, he got her down in the bathroom, you know, punching her, hitting her, or welling on her, whatever he was doing. And... After he got up from beating her, you know, she all bloody and, you know, swollen, he gets up and walked to the kitchen. And she come get up out the you know, off the floor, bloody, and she walked in the kitchen behind him and they start back the you know, argument. Arguing. Argument get back heated in the kitchen. He hit her, she grabbed a knife, she stabbed him once. He grabbed his side and he leave out his, his door. He stayed in the basement of his mother's house. And he was walking around to go up there to his mother part of the house and collapse and die right then, man. And they needed me. You know what I'm saying? She needed me. I understand that, too. They needed me to come to court and testify on what I seen because from everything that they done got, the testimony is really against her. They had other girlfriends and ex-girlfriends of the guy coming to court saying that they, he's never touched them, which is not impossible, but it's hard for me to believe. But hey, but but to each his own, you know what I'm saying? Um, they needed me to come to court for her, though, to testify on what I seen because I have seen him be aggressive. Um, at that time, I had a warrant on me, you know, a full to count for probation violation, man. So, you know, I was straight asking, hey, if I go testify, if I testify for her, are they going to lock me up? They was like right there in the courtroom. So, make a long story short, she ended up going to jail for murder. I think she had manslaughter and um, did like seven years and then came home, man. She's doing good right now. Married, got a whole new life, man. And I have to say that I'm proud of her, man. Thanks again for watching Underground Source TV with your host, 
Don Truth Knox, aka Black Buck. Fella, nigga, bang the dash. Most of my home will live for respect. Walk by, walk by, put two in the face. Set a gun at young bro, let him catch the case. Nigga, tell me where you're safe at. Tell me where you're bad. Tell me where your money at. Tell me what you had. Roll slow, how'd you do? Hell no. They go to rob me, crazy. Everybody can be a rob me, crew. Everybody can be a rob me, crew. Roll slow, the rob me, crew. Hell no. They go to rob me, crazy.